Good morning everyone, uh, welcome to Cooking Sunday Breakfast with the Cleveland Bed and Breakfast in Torquay. Uh, this is our second virtual breakfast, um, so good morning and welcome to you all. Uh, first of all we'd just like to say thank you for the massive response we had last week. Um, it was amazing to see all your comments and photos, the fact that people have gone off and tried to do poached eggs when they've never done it before or hadn't had much success before. Um, and also seeing all of your lovely Sunday breakfast. So thank you very, very much. It's, uh, it was lovely to see that. Uh, here we are, end of week five of lockdown. Um, in actual fact, this is week six for us of having no guests. Uh, we said goodbye to our last guest six weekends ago uh, after Boris Johnson announced that there was no, uh, no essential, non-essential travel to be made. Uh, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite a long haul for us already. It's weird. Um, we obviously miss seeing you guys and, uh, and having guests, um, but it seems like it might be quite a long time until, uh, until we can welcome you again. So in the meantime, we're going to uh, carry on doing uh, things like this and uh, come into your houses as you can't come to ours at the moment. So uh, this morning we are going to do um, scrambled eggs, um, give you some top tips hopefully, and uh, hopefully you're going to um, cook along with us at home at the same time. Uh, just one quick thing, I'm going to have a bit of a Joe Wicks moment. Um, no, I'm not going to break into exercise and I'm not going to come up with a, uh, uh, an Essex accent. Um, but something behind me is different to what it was last Sunday. So there's something behind me that's not there anymore, but there's something new in its place. So comments below if you think you know what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll let, I'll let you all know in, in, in time. But uh, yeah, just a little bit of fun on a Sunday morning. Okay, so scramble next. The first thing we're going to do is turn the pan on. Uh, medium heat, <clears throat> so on the induction about five and a half, um, if you haven't got induction probably five to six on gas or electric, and we're going to drop a nice good bit of butter, proper butter, into the pan. What you want is when the butter's melted, you want the butter to be coating the whole surface of the pan, so when you put the egg in, it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Pan. It's um, it's kind of enveloped by the by the butter, if that's the right word. Uh, just one thing on the size of the pan as well. Um, it's all about the surface area of the bottom of the pan because that's where the eggs are going to cook. So I use this pan for cooking a maximum of six eggs. So two portions of scrambled egg in. Um, if I was cooking any more than that, I'd go for a bigger pan so there's more surface area for the egg to, to be on the bottom where, where the cooking is taking place. So that's quite important, because otherwise you end up with a swimming pool of egg and nothing actually cooking. So uh, we'll let the butter melt, and in the meantime we're going to break the eggs into the bowl. So as I just said, um, generally we use three eggs per portion, three medium eggs per portion, if it's for scrambled eggs on toast. Um, but if it's scrambled eggs to go with a cooked breakfast, we normally use two medium eggs because you don't need quite as much when you've got a, a full English breakfast as well. Um, so yeah, three, three medium, two large would probably be enough as well. Uh, but obviously depends on your appetite as well. So they are going into the bowl. Um, I don't know if you noticed the schoolboy error last week as well, but I put enough toast on for Lizanne and I because obviously we're going to eat the breakfast after I've cooked it. Um, but I only cooked two eggs, so I had to go back and cook another two eggs afterwards. <laughs> so, uh, Schoolboy error. So this time I am cooking enough eggs for both of us. <coughs> so, six eggs into the bowl, and we're going to whisk them straight away. So don't put any salt and pepper in yet. Now, it may just be me, but I find that the scrambled egg comes out a bit watery if you put the salt and pepper in before you start whisking. It may well be that the salt starts to break down the egg and draw out the moisture, I don't know. But it, it may well just be me and there's, uh, there's nothing in it at all. But I always whisk the eggs first. And then a good turn of salt and pepper. A couple of turns per portion. And that's it, the scrambled egg's ready to go. No milk, um, cream, yeah, you can put cream in scrambled egg, uh, but generally that would be if you were serving it for a uh, you know, starter or something like that, not for breakfast, it would be, be far too rich. Uh, with the butter in the pan, it's, it's quite rich enough without, without putting cream in it as well. So just the eggs, and if you look in the pan now, 
you can see that the butter is melted and it's just starting to foam, it's just bubbling, and that's exactly what you want. Um, you, you need it to be hot so that when the egg goes into the pan, it starts cooking straight away, but you don't want it to be so hot that the butter's starting to burn. So, in the egg goes into the butter. And we just give it a little stir. You can already hear, if you heard that, you can already hear that on the bottom it's cooking because the pan was nice and hot, the butter was nice and hot um, and we poured the egg straight in on top of that. Okay, now the, one of the things with scrambled egg is as well, don't just stand here stirring it all the time. You can leave it for 30 seconds to a minute, it'll be absolutely fine. Uh, medium heat still, you can turn it down a little bit if you want, if you feel it's cooking too fast. I generally leave it on a five and just keep an eye on it. Um, but you don't need to be stirring it all the time, otherwise it's not touching the bottom of the pan and it, therefore it's not cooking. A um, couple of other things with scrambled eggs. Uh, I know some people cook them in a microwave, that's a personal opinion. Uh, but for me, or for us, we just don't feel it makes a nice creamy texture scrambled egg. Um, it ends up being a bit more of a souffle egg than a, than a scrambled egg. Um, and also the same with a non-stick pan as well. Um, I think, and you'll see in a minute when we come towards the end of, of making the scrambled eggs, you need a bit of addition to the, to the pan when you're mixing the egg to get that creamy texture. Um, and with a non-stick pan, clearly it's not sticking, so you just don't get that. And you end up with kind of a, a, a more lumpy scrambled egg, in, in my opinion, rather than a nice, smooth, creamy one. So uh, we use a stainless steel pan. Um, obviously, if you're lucky to have enough to have copper pans, then a copper pan. But uh, I definitely, unless, unless you don't have anything else, um, I wouldn't recommend a, a non-stick pan. So you can see now that the egg is really starting to cook. Okay, it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan, but it is cooking. So when you put the spatula in, you can actually feel it pulling the egg off the bottom of the pan. Um, and that's another tip, it's always handy to have something like a spatula that's got a flat edge rather than a spoon that's a curved edge so that you can get into the edge of the pan um, and pull the egg away from the edge of the pan. So that's cooking nicely. Uh, while that's doing that, um, I learned from last week you need to have something to talk about for a couple of minutes to fill in time while things are cooking, whereas I didn't have anything prepared last week. Um, so just, I just wanted to quickly kind of let you know about how um, Facebook for Business works. Um, and how come you see some posts and other people don't. Uh, Facebook for Business is very clever. Uh, we've got over a thousand followers on our Facebook page, which is fantastic. But when we put a post out there, generally only one to two percent of our audience will see it. So that's between 10 and 20 people out of that thousand people will actually see that post to begin with. And it's only when there starts to be interaction with the post, i.e. people liking it, hearting it, commenting on it, or whatever, that more pe Facebook then allow more people to see it. So uh, there's a couple of ways you can get around this and be able to see more of our posts. Firstly, you can go into your settings and set up notifications for our page so that when we put something out there, you can see it automatically. Um, another way you can do it, I'm just gonna give this another stir now because it's just starting to cook really nicely. Another way that you can do it is to sign up to our newsletter and I'll put a link in the comments of, uh, uh, underneath the post so that you can do that because we generally send a letter out, a newsletter out to let people know that we've put something out on Facebook so you can just follow the link on the email and, and see our Facebook post that way. But that's why we always urge people to like, comment and share as well with their friends our posts because it just really helps us to get our posts out there um, and to build our audience as well because Facebook don't like us to do that for free. They basically want us to pay to boost our posts so that more people can see it, which obviously for a small business, we can't afford to do all the time. So uh, yeah, you know, we're really grateful for you liking and, and commenting and sharing our posts. It's, it really helps. Right, enough talking. So the egg, I've actually probably spoken too much, but uh, the egg now, as you can see, is starting to really cook. But also, and you will, this will happen, you've got a little bit stuck on the bottom of the pan. So my top tip now is, is that is done, believe it or not, because don't forget, and we spoke about this last week, the residual heat in the pan will continue to cook the egg. But not only that, if you leave it to sit on a cold surface like I have now, I've taken off the heat, 
the condensation that builds at the bottom of the pan will also start to lift some of that scrambled egg off the bottom of the pan that's stuck on there as well. And it's a perfect way of helping you not to have to clean a dirty scrambled egg pan mm -hmm. after you finish doing it. So that basically, that, if I leave that there now for two minutes, which I will, um, that will help to, uh, to lift the egg off the, the bottom of the pan. Right, toast on. <coughs> so that's going to go on for a couple of minutes. I just leave the egg sat there now. Uh, normally if I'm cooking for an English breakfast or things like that, this is now the time where we start to plate up um, the rest of the breakfast and the scrambled egg will just sit there nicely for a couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, you know, hope you're all well still. Um, we've had another busy week with the kids. A um, bit more baking. Thomas baked a lovely chocolate cake this week. Um, what else have we done? Lots of playing in the garden again because the weather has been so glorious. Tent. Uh, we've had the tent up in the garden this week as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just a little one. We've not we've not put the big one up yet. Although we are tempted to do it at some point if the weather forecast looks good, uh, we might go away for a night in the garden. Um, so yeah, uh, keeping an eye on all our plants. We've just bought them a little greenhouse, uh, a little um, plastic covered greenhouse, which Lizanne is just going to scan over to now. Um, but our uh, our seedlings are doing really well. So we've got pumpkins growing, we've got carrots growing, we've got tomatoes growing. Um, and sunflowers and sweet corn as well. Sweet peas. And sweet peas. So yeah, there's there's loads going on in the garden at the moment. Um, yeah, you know we're uh, we're we're filling the time uh, like everyone else. You know, I guess we're all finding it quite hard. This is as I said, the end of week five. Um, we've still got a couple more weeks of lockdown to go before there's any chance of any restrictions being lifted. Um, and even then, we don't know what uh, what the lifting of those restrictions is going to be. So. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just funny times for all of us, but I hope you're all keeping well. Right, let's check on the toast. I'm just going to flip it over because it's a bit bigger today than the toaster is. There we go. And then we're going to go back to the scrambled egg. So, like I said to you now, look, the condensation in the pan... Move your hand. I need to move my hand, but the condensation in the pan is now helping me just to scrape all that egg off the bottom. And the final thing to do, once you've done that, so I'm just scraping all the egg off the bottom of the pan. It's not burnt, it's not overcooked. It'll just help when it comes to the cleaning of the pan at the end. But also, what's the point in wasting all that lovely egg on the bottom of the pan if you're not going to eat it? Toast. Thank you, Mr Sherwood. <laughs> <laughs> so the toast is now done. Stop talking is what she means. I wish. So... Another lovely bit of this West Country salted butter. Um, another little top tip if you shop in Lidl, West Country salted butter. I don't know if you can get it anywhere else in the country other than the West Country, <laughs> but it is delicious. Um, okay, so we give the eggs a final mix. And this is where I was on about the addition to the pan as well, which you're just not going to get with a non-stick pan. You end up with kind of lumpy bits of scrambled egg. Whereas with this, you end up with a really, really smooth textured scrambled egg. So I'm just going to put half of that on there. Lizanne only has one slice of toast with her eggs, so... And there we are. You can see how amazing... Let me just... Sorry, honey, I'm just going to cut your... I'm not going to eat it, no. But I'm just going to cut rude. it and just show everyone how lovely and creamy and smooth that scrambled egg is. Um, yeah, that's how we cook it at the Cleveland. Uh, we have hundreds of comments about our scrambled egg. Lots of people saying it's the best scrambled egg they've ever eaten. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and, uh, and I hope you go away and, uh, and try it and you've picked up a few top tips as well in the meantime. Um, as I said before, please like, share, uh, comment, whatever it is you need to do. Um, but we love seeing your photos as well of all the things that you're doing, um, especially your Sunday breakfast at the moment. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.